This week I'm going to be showing you my yarn counter prototype. Last time I showed you this, it was just a bunch of different parts and I sort of explained how it worked. Well, this week I have a fully working prototype and that's what I'm going to be showing you. First off, I want to show you how the clamping system works. So it's actually just a bolt here. So the case is still held together with magnets. And this is actually just a standard uh, bolt that goes through there. So it would be easy to replace it with a longer version, although I'll include a, a bolt with it because they're fairly cheap that's long enough to clamp onto most surfaces. You can clamp it either like this on the desk or like this. And we'll do it this way. So all that you do is you sort of put the plastic piece that you want sort of into the desk and then you use this wing nut to, to tighten or loosen it. So I'll just show you here. And that's all there is to it. It's clamped to the desk now. Now I'll show you the menuing system. So I wanted to keep things about as simple as I could, so I, I kept the number of menus to a minimum while giving you the functionality that I thought was important. Um, there's a reset button here, and um, that just resets the yarn. There's a power button that turns it off and back on. Uh, I haven't implemented it yet, but I'll have an auto off feature. So if you forget to turn it off, it would eventually turn off on its own when you're not using it. If the disc rotates, it'll start counting yards just like that. So uh, the menuing system looks like this. So you can select between meters and yards. And if you hit the menu system again or button again, now here on this menu, you can adjust uh, how many yards to your target. So this will beep when you get to your target. And if you hold down a button, it, it's kind of hard to see right now, but there's a, this is something I've got to fix, but there's a, uh, a cursor that kind of goes under it. And if you adjust here, you can like move over. Yeah, you can't really see this now, but I'll come up with a better way, but you can see I'm adjusting sort of the target distance. Uh, and I can put a little cursor under there, which I can see in person, but it's harder on the camera. Or I can make the whole, I can do something else, like make the whole square turn black or something if, if it's hard to see. I have some ideas on how to improve that in the future. But basically this lets you pick any... Um, target between, you know, 99,999 yards or meters and, uh, you know, a much smaller number, like down to one yard. So, uh, yeah, that's how that will work. And that will also use this port here. So this port uh, is so you can connect other things like a uh, motorized yarn swift or a motorized cone winder and this would be able to tell that device to oh, stop winding yarn after this distance of yarn has been rolled on so like if you want to make uh, skeins with a hundred meters of yarn or you wanted to make a skein with 500 yards of yarn you could totally do that and that's one of the points. And then if you don't have a device like that, this will beep at you after um, this distance has been wound. So that's how that works. Um, key beep. So you'll notice when I'm pushing keys, it makes a beep noise. But if I turn that to no, um, now... There's no more beeping. Some people don't like beeping. Some people will. I kind of like it. And this menu just displays the battery voltage. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to put something fancier in there that tells you like if the battery is high or low, or you know, if it's fully charged or not. Um, the problem is different kinds of battery, battery chemistries use um, different... Uh, voltages and any of them will work here in, in this device so I don't know if I want to put the intelligence or if I just tell people the voltage and then you can sort of figure out what um, about when you need to change your batteries or maybe I don't even need this since it will last 
a very long time on a set of batteries. Um, when it no longer works is when you need to change the batteries. This will just give you a little advanced warning after, you know, a few years of use. So I put it in there. I think it's kind of interesting. So, um, but making it intelligent would be, um, more work and, and it wouldn't be future proof of a new chemistry. Like for instance, there's lithium batteries out there now that are higher voltages and that would totally confuse this. In fact, hmm, I'll have to see if those will actually be recommended for this kind of device. It may be not a good idea to use those. I'll look into that and come up with recommendations on what kind of batteries, but certainly uh, alkaline and standard uh, rechargeable metal hydroxide batteries um, would work great with this device. I've, I've tested both of those already. So now I'll just show you how you actually use it. Reset the distance and you just wind it around like that. And then you go around once like that. Now you're ready to go. So I don't know if you can see the screen, but it's like one yard, two yards. I pre-measured this uh, length of yarn to be 10 yards and we'll see how close it gets. So yeah, it's right at nine yards. And because, um, I had about this much distance of yarn sort of wound on before I started rolling it, if I roll it around a few more times, we're right at 10. So I've done a little bit of testing with this already, and I'm quite happy with, uh, how accurately it measures yarn already. And I have a couple of ideas to improve the reliability on that aspect. Uh, I have noticed that I don't think I've got two sets of hooks here right now on each side. I don't think I'm going to need those. I think I'll just go with probably one set of hooks um, or yarn guides on each side. And then you just wrap it around the disc a full time and you get really good results with distance. Uh, also the battery life on this, I, I mentioned this a little bit before, but even without any optimization, I'm already getting, um, what is it? A little over two months of constant on usage, which is a lot better than I was expecting without um, optimizing things. So I'm really happy with that. I do know that there's several things I can do to greatly improve the uh, power efficiency of this device. So uh, after I spend some time optimizing the code I sh and then fixing a few things on the circuit board, I should easily be able to get several times what I'm getting right now. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I know people are going to ask if I'm almost done with the yarn counter now, and the answer is unfortunately no. There's a lot of work I need to do. I've, I've got like a list of around a dozen or more pretty significant things I want to change with the next prototype. And each of those, or several of those at least, are going to take a, a, quite a while. And with the Electric Eel Wheel 6 coming up, I'm, I'm not really going to have that much time to spend on this project for the next several months. So I expect the next prototype, which is sort of what I'm hoping will be close to a final prototype, uh, is going to take a while. And then after that, I have to get it ready for manufacturing. And that I know from all the other projects I've done will also take a while. So uh, we're not looking at any um, time frame in the near future for this. But what this prototype has done uh, through my testing so far has shown me that this, this works really well. And it's totally something I can make. That combined with the interest that the community has shown to this kind of device means that I'm definitely going to be moving forward with this. And it's just a matter of time. I've got to find the time to sort of make the next prototype and then get it ready for manufacturing. And uh, as soon as I can, I'll get it out there. But uh, it's not it's not going to be in the near future. It's going to take some time. I'll, I'll give some more updates as I uh, make more progress on this project. If people have any suggestions or questions about it, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer those. Thanks for watching.